I'm Dan Olds, and we are here at SC13 with Bob Murphy with IBM, which is an approach to storage that I found really interesting. How are you doing, Bob? I'm doing great, Dan, thanks. So what we're talking about is your GPFS file system. Dan, one of the biggest problems that's happening in the industry today is as these disk drives are getting bigger and bigger, they're at four terabytes now, the reliance on conventional RAID is becoming problematic. Yes. Remember in the past, we, we loved RAID. RAID was our best yeah. friend, and the drives were you know, 10 gigabytes, 100 gigabytes, but now that they're four terabytes. The problem today is, is when you lose a four terabyte drive, the time to rebuild that drive during using conventional RAID techniques is problematic. A four terabyte drive can take four days to rebuild. And there's really no way to speed that up. The drive has to rebuild. The drive it's, has to be rebuilt. And then yes. it, it multiplies from what I'm hearing with customers is when you have thousands of spindles, you're starting to get within the mean time between failure of drive. You're just going to have drive It's going to happen. It's going to happen all the time. Uh, our reliance on conventional RAID uh, is no longer tenable. Not only is that drive taking four days to rebuild, but that system itself is spending so much of its resources to rebuild the drive, it becomes virtually useless yeah, during the rebuild Because you're cycle. running in degraded mode right. all the time. Exactly. And it's a vicious circle that's just, or a cycle, right. it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And uh, actually one of the, I'll put the link up on the screen for the readers, but uh, there have been a lot of articles out there about RAID being dead because of this. But there hasn't been a solution. Right. And now I think you guys yeah. might have one here. So what we've done is we've taken out that RAID controller, yep. which rebuilds a single drive at a time using another single drive to do the rebuild. We've taken uh, all the disks that are available in the uh, storage array, in our case 60 disk drives in an individual storage array. Say, how many did you say? 60. 60, 60 okay. 60. And what we can do is have all those drives uh, work together, get all the bandwidth of all the drives to work together to, to rebuild the failed uh, drive. And not, we don't even have to rebuild the failed drive. Actually, one of the things that we do to really get real short rebuilds is just rebuild the part of the uh, drive that needs to be rebuilt. So if data is lost on a drive, we can actually just uh, rebuild that part of the lost data on different parts on different of the drive. Drives. Yes. That's the thing I found interesting. So you're not, you, you have parity, for yes. want of a better word, on 60 drives right. as opposed to five or, or you know, the, the regular RAID exactly. things. And that way, there's no real rebuild because that parity is there and that data can be recreated on Slack space on those yes, 60 so drives. Yes, so another thing that we don't have is we don't have uh, spare drives. We don't have hot spares in this yeah. uh, type of setup. So the amount of usable storage that we have versus the amount of uh, raw storage that you buy is higher as a result of that too, since there's no hot spares in our configuration. So in addition to all, having the, all those disk drives work together to rebuild the lost data, we also take advantage of all the abundant uh, Intel processors and all the cores that we have in our uh, GPFS storage server to uh, work on rebuilding the drive. And they're, they're so high in performance, they're so uh, uh, much uh, abundant horsepower available in the machine that not only can they rebuild that uh, lost data so fast, but they can also uh, provide uh, continuing service to the there's, applications. There's not degradation. There's no, there's no uh, perceptible loss of uh, 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 performance during the rebuild. See, and that's the thing, and the, the way I remember this being presented before was that um, you have a system that has a lot of spindles in it, and as you have failures, you don't have to go run right out and replace those yes. failures. It just, it moves that data to other places. It takes that yeah. out of the array, logically. Right. And when you have time, when you exactly. have some downtime, you go in, replace yeah. the failed We even drives. have customers that never replace the drives. They, really? call, they want it to fail in place, let it degrade over time, because actually it's in places that they can't uh, access, you know, for sure. security reasons, whatever. Um, so, and we have people buying this product just because of this uh, capability. See, that, yeah. that feature is to be what makes it's, the story it's a, for it. It's a very well-known problem. Because the drives have gotten so big so fast, some people maybe are on one terabytes now, and as they go to the next step, four terabytes, it become more problematic. Uh, and, and we've had, uh, we have cases where people have had uh, uh, old systems that took four days to rebuild, yeah. down to less than an hour with, uh, with this uh, product. And, and then more importantly, they don't perceive any loss of uh, performance during the rebuild.
and the, that four days to rebuild, you're running in degraded mode over those four days. That's what's killer. <clears throat> That's what's killer. Uh, I've uh, worked with uh, storage systems in the past that had the exist, uh, uh, you know, the conventional RAID uh, way of re rebuilding data, and I remember when we first got to the bigger drives, one terabyte drive, two terabyte drives, all of a sudden uh, we were getting these service calls and customers didn't know what was going on with the machines. Our engineers didn't know what was going on with the machines. And it was the drive rebuilds, drive re-silverings were taking a week yeah. and uh, the machine was effectively down for the, uh, and, and these, what a lot of customers are doing with these conventional RAID uh, protected systems now, is they're just mirroring them. They're just using yeah. RAID 0, and they're just uh, mirroring well, RAID, uh, RAID 1. 1. I'm sorry, RAID, RAID 1. And, um, and so now you're buying yeah. two apps when yes. you need. You've got uh, that's becoming a hot very spare. common. And so you're, they're buying all this capacity, but because they're afraid of the downtime during a rebuild, mm -hmm. they just do the, uh, 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 the mirroring RAID 1. One of the things that is relatively new uh, with GPFS and what has really sparked uh, uh, its commercial uh, uh, growth in both the enterprise and in HPC is we've been talking about it as a file system so far in the conversation. And throughout all these 15 years at IBM, it has been a file system. Yeah. But uh, what we did last year, actually a year ago at this time, is we took that file system and put it on top of a, uh, a, a commercial off-the-shelf Intel x86, JBOD uh, infrastructure, um, we call the GPFS storage server. And that's where the G uh, GPFS native RAID GNR is on, and having that as an appliance now, a hardware software appliance, based on industry standard hardware, has created a uh, game-changing yeah. enter enterprise and also HPC appliance product that uh, has been s sopped up by uh, some of the biggest uh, supercomputer and that's where the, That's users. where GPFS yeah. really comes yes, into its own. exactly. And especially since you have the processing power in those yeah. arrays, and you're spreading it around at 60 drives to be able to do those quick rebuilds, be performant all the way through, and have all the connectivity you need. One of the th things that we are focusing on now is what we're calling the consumability or the uh, usability of the product. And this is one instance of that, is that we've uh, put made an appliance, it's easily deployable, and it's also, to be honest, uh, much more affordable than alternative systems out there in the marketplace. Because, Wait, but you're not drilling them on the price? Yes, which I, I know it's very uh, unusual to hear from IBM. Wow, okay. Uh, but the product is actually about half the list price as uh, uh, alternative systems out there in the marketplace. The, <gasps> the product is actually about half the list price as uh, uh, alternative systems out there in the marketplace. Capacity. Yeah, because of this uh, software, uh, what, we, what we call, what the industry is calling software-defined storage, Commercial, uh, uh, you know, uh, commodity hardware, industry standard hardware. These are just industry standard, industry standard JBOS we're using, industry standard servers we're using. No hardware RAID controller, and we're uh, putting and you GPFS. You have, have the redundancy of the disks. Exactly, we're putting GPFS on it. And when you look at what we can do versus alternative systems out there, we, not only can we do much more than they can do, but these are the incumbent systems out there. This product is uh, half the price of those systems. And this okay. even includes open store space systems that are out there. Wow. Luster based systems that are out there. But that's the power of. Again, open. Open, GPFS that's on top of uh, industry commodity. standard. Commodity. Yeah. yeah. Great stuff. Well, thank you, Bob. Thank you. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.